Comcast is a big and diversified company. Its primary business is providing cable television services as well as internet and phone services. Comcast is also producing and distributing content through NBC Universal and Sky. So it has some really strong brands. And when we look at the stock price, we see that it went down from its peak in September 2021 by over 40%. So let's value and analyze this company to see is it a wise idea to invest in such brands as Universal, NBC and Sky at the current price. Individual Insiders it is an X with 0.9% of the company owned by individual insiders. And we would like to see this number over 2%. So the management does not have a lot of its skin in the game. And are individual insiders buying? That is an X. In the last year, there were two sell transactions worth around $469,000 and no buy transactions. And do super investors own this company? That is a check with 11 super investors, including people like Thomas Russo, for whom it makes 1.5% of his portfolio, Robert Alstein with 1.2% of his portfolio, and Thomas Geiner with 0.4%. And are super investors buying right now? That is an X. They bought over 1.1 million shares in the last quarter and sold over 1.6 million shares. So a lot of movement with this stock, but most of it is selling. Return on invested capital. That is an X at 7.2% 10-year median returns. And we want to see this number higher than 10%. So it's not bad, but not quite at a level that would really caught my attention. And free cash flow growth? That is an X at 7.8% 10-year compound annual growth rate. And it's the same story as with return on invested capital. We would like to see this number higher than 10%. So uh, not a very impressive start. And what do we know about net profit margin? It is also an X at 4.4%. And the industry margin is around 7.9%. So it seems that Comcast is not really able to use its size and diversification as an advantage over the competitors. And now let's take a look at share buyback. It is a check. In the last 10 years, they bought back almost 17% of the company's shares. That is very impressive and a good news for long-term investors. And what about the debt? It is yet another X. It would take over seven years for Comcast to pay back the long-term debt with a current free cash flow. So the fundamentals seem sort of okay, maybe except the debt, which is really high, but nothing really exceptional so far. But of course, there can be many reasons for us to want to own a company. For example, the dividend yield is 3.2%. So that is a nice result. Thanks to dividends, we get $1.16 annually per every share. And the payout ratio? That is a check at 29.6%. And we want to see the payout ratio somewhere between 20 and 50%. Because that tells us that the company is paying us a significant portion of its earnings. But at the same time, it is not so big that it could actually hurt the growth of the company or its financial stability. And what about dividend growth? It is another check at 11.4% five-year growth rate. 
and they are paying dividends since 1989 with a gap between 1999 and 2008. It is not a very steady growth, but the trend is pretty visible. PE is 29.6, so quite high, and therefore we should not expect this company to be very cheap. But let's value it using a discounted cash flow formula. And we will have to estimate the growth of Comcast for the next 10 years. And we will make three scenarios, low, medium, and a high one. So in the low scenario, we will estimate a growth of 4% for the entire 10 years. In the medium, 5% for the first five years, and then 7%. And in the high scenario, 6% and then 9%. So why did I choose such estimates? Well, the high scenario is basically what a lot of analysts predict. Medium and low scenarios are closer to Comcast results in the last 10 years. In that time frame, revenue grew by 6.9%, free cash flow by 4.4% and earnings per share only by 0.6%. So with such estimates, the intrinsic value in the low scenario is $22, in the medium $28, and in the high scenario $33. And when we apply a 30% margin of safety, we get $15 in the low scenario, in the medium $19, and in the high one $23. And the current price is around $36. So it is all in the red. But the price is not that far off the high scenario without the margin of safety. So it seems expensive, but not by a big margin. Comcast is a huge company and it seems pretty stable, but the price for that is a slower growth. There is really one thing that is worrying for me, and that is debt, which is substantial. But also, there are two things that I really like. One is a significant share buyback, and the other one is a nice and stable dividend. Unfortunately, the price is just not there at the moment.